Today, let's meditate on the meaningful life. Micah chapter 6, verse 8 in the Old Testament of the Bible. The prophet writes, What is it the Lord requires of you? To act justly, to love faithfulness, or mercy is some translations, and to walk humbly with your God. Let's pray. Lord, we invite you to speak to us in our time today that we would uh, walk with you in such great meaning that the world would know you're a great God. Through Christ we pray. Amen. So what gives your life meaning? In Acts chapter 13, verse 36, in the New Testament of the Bible, it says that David, after serving God's purpose in his own generation, fell asleep. One of my favorite verses, I have a bunch of those, one of my favorite verses, but it's one of, you know, I, don't you love that? David, after doing all that God had given him life and breath to do in his generation, died. God took him home. I want that to be said about me. I don't think there'd be a better phrase to be written on a cemetery grave than, you know, Brett. After he had done everything God had called him to do in his generation, rested with the Father. Isn't that what you want said of you as well? The question is then, so then what makes life meaningful? Now, we live in a time, the reason this is so important for us to wrestle with is we are constantly being bombarded by messages that would tell us that life doesn't have meaning. But without meaning, life becomes unbearable. Suffering becomes overwhelming. Viktor Frankl, who suffered in the Nazi concentration camp, said, the ultimate quest of life is the search for meaning. He said, life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by a lack of meaning and purpose. If you find yourself really struggling in times of suffering, it probably is because you're having a hard time finding meaning in the midst of the suffering. And it's also hard to find joy without meaning. According to the Journal of Positive Psychology, when they surveyed 400 American adults about happiness, what they discovered was that people who felt the highest level of meaning in life also had the highest level of happiness. And it was more than just coincidence. What they found was there's a direct correlation between meaning in life and joy in life. Without meaning, life is simply unbearable. I remember the account from World War II, actually before World War II, psychologists had this theory. They wondered if they gave people meaningless work, if they could bear it very long. And the Nazis actually put that to the test. The Nazis actually, in one of the concentration camps, uh, ordered soldier, uh, soldiers, ordered, ordered um, prisoners to take dirt from one side of the camp and move it to the opposite side of the camp. <clears throat> and all day long, that's all they did. They just moved dirt in barrels from one side of the camp to the other side of the camp. And the next day, <clears throat> they gave the orders to reverse the direction, to go ahead and take that, that dirt that they had just moved and move it back to where they found it originally. Now, at first, the prisoners just thought, Oh, they changed their minds, and so they did it. The next day, they told them to do the same. And again, this time, they were kind of frustrated. It's like, man, can't they make up their minds? And then the next day, they told them, take that dirt and put it back to where it was originally. And again, at first, it was just frustration because they thought, what in the world's going on? They're kind of... And then after a while, they realized that the Nazis were purposefully giving them meaningless work. And when they discovered... <laughs> That they, the work that they were doing was absolutely futile. What the psychologist had predicted began to happen. Literally, prisoners were running into electrified fences to kill themselves. 
They would attack guards to get guards and dogs to, to shoot them or to kill them in some way. They, they, here, here's, and here's what this study, here's what they concluded. That people were willing to do the most menial work and they were even willing to do work for the enemy, but they could not bear the idea. Their soul could not handle doing meaningless labor. And so we need to ask the question, what makes our life today meaningful? One of the things that saddens me about our generation is that so many of the voices are calling and saying, life doesn't have meaning. My life is, you can't have a hard time finding it. And, and, and so lives essentially degrade into moving dirt from one side of the compound to the other. What made me think about this recently was uh, four psychologists studied uh, the notable quotations of famous people around the world over the last uh, hundred years. They analyzed the quotes of 195 men and women from the past couple hundred years. And they summarized their major themes to what they said about the meaning of life. Some said the primary purpose of life is to be enjoyed. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the journey. That was what 17% said from Ralph Waldo Emerson to Cary Grant to Janis Joplin. Some said the purpose of life is to express compassion to others, to love and to serve. That's not bad. 13% endorsed this from Albert Einstein to Gandhi to the Dalai Lama. Einstein said only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. That's better. Many said life, the meaning of life is unknowable. It's a mystery. Many said, 24% said, life has no meaning. Camus, Stephen Hawkins, Hawkins, uh, Freud, Bertrand Russell, Sartre, Clarence Darrow, remember the famous attorney from the Scopes trial? Um, if you've seen the movie, um, uh, uh, um, Inherit the Wind. Clarence Darrow famously said, life is a ship that is tossed by every wave and by every wind. A ship headed to no port, no harbor, with no rudder, no compass, no pilot, simply fo floating for a time, then lost in the waves. How can you live a meaningful life if you're just a ship tossed by the waves and lost? Some like Carl Sagan and Carl Jung said, We're create, we have to create our own meaning in life. Others like Camus and Oscar Wilde said, life is a joke. 11% said, we are here for God. We are here to worship God and to walk with God. And because of that, we're here to serve and love other people. Amongst those, of course, were people like Billy Graham and Mother Teresa and um, <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr. So the question for today is what gives your life meaning? What makes your life more meaningful than simply moving dirt from one end of the compound to another from morning till night? Micah 6 says, this is what the Lord requires of you, to act justly, love faithfulness, to walk humbly with your God. To act justly. Can you find meaning in simply doing what is right every day, all the time? Simply loving the truth, living by the truth, honoring other people because they are made in the image of God, being honest, not showing favoritism to somebody because of their race or their uh, whether they're rich or poor, or whether they're male or female, or whether you agree with them or not, you act justly, which means we are not respecters of people. We just love everybody, respect everybody as made in the image of God. Can you find purpose in just being a righteous person? To love faithfulness, as many translations say, to love mercy. See, this is the balancing act of justice. We not only act justly toward others, but then we don't put ourselves in the judge's seat judging other people, you see. That's the easy thing. Oh, I act justly, and therefore that gives me the right to condemn others. No, 
we act, although that's kind of what happens in our society today, you know, that's political correctness. No, we act justly, take responsibility for that ourselves, and then we love mercy toward others. Shakespeare said, you know, if everybody got what they deserved, if everybody got their just desserts, who shall escape the whipping? See, we all need mercy. And so we show mercy to others. Can you find purpose when other people hurt you in being forgiving? Can you find purpose when you see an unjust world around you being somebody who is just and merciful? Remember, God said, do not take revenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Love faithful mercy. And finally, to walk humbly with your God. To walk humbly with your God. I think of Jesus in the Great Commission when he said, this is his promise to you. He said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I will command you, and what I will be with you always to the end of the world. The great purpose in life, what gives meaning in life, is knowing that the God who made you is with you always. How do you know you're with him always? Because you are his disciple making disciples. He promises you, be obedient to my command, go and to my commission, go and make disciples of all nations. And by the way, that means, first of all, you are a disciple learning and following Jesus, hearing his voice and following, and then you make disciples. As a friend of mine says, if you're not making a disciple, you're not a disciple. Disciples make disciples. And so, but when we go and we're obedient in being a disciple, then making disciples, then what do we know? We are following Jesus always. He is with us always from now to the very end. And that's what gives life meaning. What is required of you to act justly, to love faithfulness, to walk humbly with your gods, with your God. Um, be a disciple who makes disciples, and Jesus will be with you all the way. I want to close this morning or today with a prayer from St. Francis. Would you pray, bow with me and pray, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. I think this is the prayer of a purposeful life. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Lord, this is our prayer today that you would make today a meaningful day as every moment we seek to be righteous, just people who are then merciful to others, who bring grace to others, especially people who have never experienced your grace and they need to know you. And so we make disciples and then we can know you walk with us moment by moment. It's through Christ we pray. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us. And if you have found this encouraging, let me encourage you to share it with somebody else who uh, may hear God's encouragement through this as well. Let's pray for each other.